The story that'll be told inside the walls that are yet to be built here is the story not only of a presidency, but of a movement, a determined movement dedicated to the greatness of America and faith in its bedrock traditions, in the essential goodness of its people, in the essential soundness of its institutions, and yes, faith in our very essence as a nation. My role with President Reagan actually began before the White House. I met him when he was contemplating running for president, and uh, I talked to him, and I was just so impressed as a young student. A year later or so, he announced he was running for president, so I walked into the uh, headquarters and said, I want to volunteer to work on your campaign. Once he came in the White House, uh, I was offered a position to come in and work for him on the White House staff. And as he got to the end of his term, uh, President and Mrs. Reagan were making plans for how they wanted to live their, their life after the White House. They found a house they wanted to live in. They uh, were thinking about what their office would be, and they were thinking about the presidential library. Part of my role as his, his chief of staff uh, in his uh, post-presidency was to, uh, to be the point person for the presidential library. And they talked about it. how could we make this a place that could tell the story and make it a place that people would want to visit and that would engage people of all generations, from young students uh, to older people who wanted to just kind of think about those golden years. And, uh, and that was the plan, uh, to build something that would be vibrant, that would be dynamic going forward, and that would be uh, a contribution to the conversation. Ronald Reagan, before he had his ranch in Santa Barbara, he had three other ranches. And one of those ranches actually bordered on the space where the Reagan Presidential Library is now. And even beyond that, when he was making movies and television shows, he would often do Western scenes, and they would use the actual place where the Reagan Library is today as the venue for cowboys riding horses. He and Nancy Reagan were very interested in it. They got into a Jeep one day while they were still in the White House and Secret Service went up and looked at this spot in Simi Valley. And he, President Reagan looked out, Nancy Reagan, they could see the Pacific Ocean, they could see the rolling hills of Southern California, and they said, this is the place. I had the, the great fortune of being a part of it before we broke ground here. I had the opportunity as a member of the House to fly with President Reagan over this site before we broke ground. We were at a Christmas party, at his last Christmas party, and uh, I'm walking through and they were getting ready to go upstairs for the evening. And the president looks over, hey, Congressman, how's my, how's my library coming? And so I, I was a little embarrassed and, I, and he said, hey, come over and tell all, all these folks how we're doing with the library. I, I said, well, I was just out there last week. These bulldozers are kicking up rattlesnakes. He said, oh, did I ever tell you my rattlesnake story? And everybody perked up. He says, you know, I ride English. I said, yes, Mr. President, I, I'm well aware of that. My horse reared and I pulled back on the reins really hard and he backed off and I looked down and here's this rattlesnake. And so I got the horse to back, I got off the horse I walked over there and I stomped that rattlesnake in the head. And then I realized my boots were Reeboks. <laughs> True story. And uh, there was a major project underway to, once the decision was made to build a library, there to make sure that those rattlesnakes were relocated so there were no encounters with uh, library guests when they were visiting the presidential library. One thing the Reagans wanted to do with the Presidential Library was give people a sense of what it's like to be the president. And one way to do that is to take people into the places where the president operates. And the Oval Office is the center of that. So the president made it very clear that he wanted to have an exact replica of the Oval Office. And it was built off the original blueprints of the Oval Office. And as the construction was taking place, the architects noticed that the height of the original Oval Office, which is what President Reagan wanted, was higher than the, the height of the presidential library. So the choice was either raise the roof of the library or lower the floor to build the Oval Office. So as you go through the presidential library, you'll see there's a ramp that gently takes you down to a lower level where you enter the Oval Office, and that way it could be an actual replica to the, the real Oval Office in the White House. Well, before the construction even started, there, there was a groundbreaking, and the Reagans wanted to get that done while they were in the White House because it was important that the library uh, construction begin and that it open and it it's begin operation. The White House advance team was very skilled at putting events together and President and Mrs. Reagan and the trustees of the library and a small group of others were there with shovels to break ground for the library. And the advance team very smartly softened up the soil right in front of 
uh, where President and Mrs. Reagan were so they could take those shovels and they could stick it in the ground and they could throw it over their shoulder. But they didn't do it where the rest of us were. So we had shovels and I still have my shovel. And we were trying to shove them in the ground and we we're jam trying to jam them in this rock hard soil. So President and Mrs. Reagan looked very, very strong and shoveling the dirt away and the rest of us couldn't even break the surface. I think President Reagan would be very pleased with his library today. It's an active, dynamic place. Uh, People of all ages are visiting it. It's a place where the candidates for President of the United States come to make their case. I think Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan would be very happy to see where the Reagan Library is today. Well, there's no question about it. It's, uh, it's the number one destination point. And we used to say that uh, Simi Valley is a destination point for parts of Southern California. And we now call Simi Valley a destination part for the rest of the world quite often. I don't think there are adequate words to describe what my life has been here. And the honors I had to be with President Ronald Reagan, it's surreal to me. I still pinch myself when I think about it. And we're going back a lot of years now. Proverbially, old men plant trees, even though they do not expect to see their fruition. And so it is with presidents. The doors of this library are open now, and all are welcome. The judgment of history is left to you, the people. I have no fears of that, for we have done our best. And so I say, come and learn from it.